I failed. I took the Hack the Box Certified Penetration Testing Specialist course and exam, and I didn't pass. I ran out of time, at least that's the excuse I'm giving myself. I was actually moving across the country, and for some reason I thought that, oh, I'd be able to squeeze in taking a hacking exam, and that didn't go so well. So hey, in full transparency, Hack the Box and Hack the Box Academy paid for a review and some promotion of their CPTS course and exam, and this is a sponsored video, but it's a little bit different because I didn't pass. If you aren't familiar, the Hack the Box CPTS brings you up to speed as an intermediate penetration tester and ethical hacker. You learn all about different vulnerabilities, you learn how to craft your own exploits, you go through privilege escalation and active directory and all this cool crazy stuff. It's a lot of material and it's all super high quality material, but you need to have time that you can dedicate to it. The CPTS course itself is the penetration tester job role path on Hack the Box Academy. It's super cool, you learn through all these different modules. It is text-based, but with lots of labs and exercises and activities to get you hands-on, but ultimately comes the exam. The exam itself simulates a real-world penetration test from the outside in, right? Looking at the external attack surface and then getting in with an initial foothold and compromise and then getting the lay of the lands between Windows machines, Linux machines, and Active Directory environments. And it's all real-world and modern infrastructure with multiple machines to move through. You have 10 full days to go through the exam and write a thorough, professional, commercial-grade report, and you even have a free retake with one purchase of the exam voucher. And I know what you might be thinking. I know you might be thinking, whoa, those 10 days are super generous compared to a whole lot of others. Hey, you don't have a whole lot of time. 10 days feels like a lot of time. Now, I will be the first to say, especially while trying to juggle like real life and normal obligations, that it's even then not a whole lot of time. Because remember, that penetration tester job path on Hack the Box Academy, the core of the CPTS course, is like, what, 41 hours long of content, and there's a lot to it. The exam covers a vast majority, if not almost everything, that's covered in the course. That's a blessing and a curse because, hey, you're going to be taking a test on everything that you've learned, but you're going to be taking a test on everything that you've learned. <laughs> With that, let me throw in a little nugget here. When you're taking the exam, when you're going through the CPTS capstone challenge here, use the global search within the Hack the Box Academy, especially when you run into some service or some technology or one kind of software that you're like, oh, I remember going through this, I remember reading it, but I don't know the exact commands right off the rip to be able to go ahead and beat up the service. Use the search functionality. It will save your bacon, trust me, it did for me. Well, sort of, in the moment. <laughs> so I got about maybe 30%, 40%, I don't know if I'm being generous, through the exam content and materials. I had gained access and was inside of the internal network and was starting to go enumerate Active Directory, and then life got ahead of me and I couldn't pull it off. But even in those steps to get into the environment, I could tell, man, this exam has some grit to it. I do want to absolutely emphasize, and I think Hack the Box takes a lot of pride in this, and they say, look, this is not a CTF. It's not a capture the flag. It's not something where you, hey, pull a vulnerability off the shelf, maybe exploit DB or whatever. You grab, copy and paste some stuff off GitHub, slap it in, fire the gun. It's not going to work that way because you are going to have to find, discover, uncover, unravel vulnerabilities and know their impact so that you can then craft your own exploit to do what you are going to do with them. This is awesome, but also a little bit hard. There is no easy button. You can't just kind of load up Metasploit and just go fire and compromise a machine. You really have to dig through it and craft your own stuff. And if I may, that means you kind of have to get creative. Like, so I'll offer uh, whatever Easter eggs that I can without alluding to the actual exam environment. Uh, the first couple of things that you are going to compromise require some innovative thought because you might see a vulnerability that looks like, ooh, something that you might naturally think of, but it's not that. It's something that you might otherwise think of in a different scenario, and you just sort of have to bridge that gap. It also means really, really thorough testing. Like you have to go take a look at, ooh, what does this input box do? What does this input field do? What does that input parameter do? How can you give the best coverage of your own assessment, and again, a real world penetration test to go find your next foothold or find the next breadcrumb? So you, as the student, as the penetration testing candidate here, really have to go find alternate avenues for exploitation and then leverage the environment that you see in front of you, taking advantage of software, taking advantage of privileges, taking advantage of what you might have access to in one direction, and then take it with something in a different direction to find the next way deeper into the environment.
And again, if I kind of go out on a limb here, I think that is especially vital and important kind of in the early stages and like the beginning of the exam, because you are going to do all your enumeration. You're going to go find, hey, what can I go interact with? What can I play with? And it's a little bit of a flood. I think they give you maybe a lot to run with to start. And then you just kind of have to put the puzzle pieces together, knowing what you've seen, knowing what you found, and knowing what you might be able to do next. And I mean that especially with web application security. Hey, you're gonna be taking a look at the public facing websites. You're gonna be looking at HTTP services and you wanna be thinking of those, hey, local file inclusion, remote file inclusion, all these vulnerabilities that you might be able to chain together, even if it's something like a cross-site scripting or SQL injection, tricking the database or server-side template injection, all those things, you kind of want to have armed and ready on your tool belt so that once you find the small thing that you could push and pull on, one thing that you got that thread, now you can keep moving forward, but you need to know, ooh, I can mix these two together. I'm painting the picture here. Let me go put these colors in a way that they've never gone before. That's cool. But as you know, that external attack surface is just the tip of the iceberg. That first shell is only the beginning. Once you get inside of the environment, you're gonna be doing lateral movement. You're gonna be pivoting. You're gonna be throwing chisel out there. You're gonna be getting proxy chains rocking. You're gonna be doing everything that you might already naturally do for real legitimate penetration testing. And inside of an active director environment, you're gonna to have to be, I don't know, swinging back and forth between RDP sessions. You're gonna be locking onto SMB shares and using evil WinRM to kind of bounce and forth. Yes, obviously Bloodhound's gonna be in the mix. Crack Map Exec is gonna be in the mix. You're gonna be throwing out Rubius. And that is where I'm trying to drive the point home and that is a extremely culminating and, and, and a good compilation of everything that Hack the Box teaches you, whether it's in Hack the Box Academy or even Hack the Box machines on their own. So let me be honest, let me be fully transparent here because I basically came to Hack the Box like a dog with my tail between my legs and being like, I'm sorry, I, I, I couldn't get it done. Hey, kind of drive across the country here. And I, I just kept running out of time. Like, I, I feel like I'm not gonna do justice giving you a review when it's not, I don't know, anywhere near what it should have been. And Hack the Box always, as generous and as kind as they are said like listen john let me just l let me tease you with what else is coming within the exam and you can see the absolute caliber that we want to bring to students in this cpts exam and capstone challenge here and even with just that little peek, the, the small little glimpse of what was to come next in the exam environment, I knew, man, okay, goodness, there was no way that I was going to be able to get that done while trying to move across the country and all the other crap that I was going on. So look, that's a fault on me, but I want to bring that and drive that point home to you. And that like, you've got 10 days for this exam. You've got a lot of time and make the most of it. Allocate all that you can for this because you, you got to be creative and innovative and you have to be thinking and you have to be with it. So I, I can't say it enough. Please, please, please take those 10 days seriously. And because especially in that internal assessment that you do, it is so comprehensive and you're going to be cracking passwords. You're going to be firing up Hashcat. You're going to be using John the Ripper, whatever you use. You're going to be figuring out weak access controls. You're going to be seeing, oh, what privileges does this thing have or shouldn't have and be able to take advantage of that. And I know, hey, all that is just kind of fluff, though. Everyone can say that. But the best tidbit that I might be able to give you, even with, hey, the half-complete or half-baked attempt that I gave, uh, my nuggets, or again, some maybe words of wisdom, and that whenever you see something, whether it's Hack the Box CPTS and its exam, or even any other exam, if I might, for just general advice, if you see something that seems out of the ordinary or out of place or just odd because it's not normally there, or even if it normally is there, take a second look, take a third look, because if it's there, it's there for a reason. And the way that this is a curated exam environment to test you, everything has a purpose in its placing and placement. So with that, let me go down a couple other different directions here, because I think one thing that again sets Hack the Box and the CPTS uh, apart from others is that report that comes at the end of it. Because I've I've taken other, hey, uh, hacking industry certification exams and stuff like that, but the, again, gravity or, or caliber of, of what they're hoping for and they want to receive from you from this exam report is top tier. It's high quality, it's breakdowns of vulnerabilities, impact, CVE, CVSS scores, you know, just showing what it could mean and what it could really do to a business if this is taken to its extreme in a legitimate corporate real business environment. 
With that, you need to be thorough. You need to be organized. You have to have something that is a professional commercial grade report. And they're not going to take anything less. Like I've seen some of the comments and feedbacks from others, because I'm sure, hey, me, just like you, might be looking around to see who else is taking this thing. What have they been up to? What have, what are they up against? And what feedback they give you when they, hey, there are criteria that they want to see met for your exam report they hold you to a really high standard. And that's a good thing. You just need to be prepared for it and ready for it. It's not just writing a, a, a CTF write-up that you slap on CTF time. You know what I mean? An important thing to note is that, hey, a real person is going to be reading your report and giving you real feedback. So you've got 10 days to complete the exam, but it's going to take, I think they say, 20 days at the latest to get back feedback to you. Usually it's way sooner. And from what I've seen, it's fast. And once you pass, you'll be able to pull down your certificate. Hey, show it off, brag about it, put it on the fridge. And that thing, never expires. One of the coolest things about Hack the Box and their CPTS or any other certifications that they never expire, you've got that for life and you can, you know, show it with pride. And I want to pull on that thread just a little bit more here because I think it's something super duper important uh, because it's been proven to me. Like now that I've seen it with my own eyes, at the end of this thing, as you round out CPTS in the exam, a CPTS cert holder, someone who succeeds and passes here, earns their certificate, you are a now battle-tested and such a valuable asset to any company, organization, or business as a penetration tester and as an ethical hacker by today's standards. This, I think, puts you through the gauntlet in the best way that you prove your merit and you just kind of put the flag, stake in the ground and say, look, hey, I'm a certified penetration testing specialist. And that's true. That's a fact. And maybe a funny thing, I guess, is like, hey, I, I can't say that. I, I can't say that right now because I, I didn't pass. And, and I want to take this exam again. I do. I do want to take it again. And I don't know, maybe I just sort of come to terms with where I see and, I, and I'm understanding, you know, life does its thing and time and resource allotment is just a other thing. Um, but I also come to terms and realize like, look, I, I'm not a penetration tester. And I don't know if folks oftentimes even realize or are aware, but I am not a pen tester. I've never had pen testing as a job and it's not my job right now. So, hey, I've got a lot to learn. Like I'll be the first to admit, and I want to learn more. And I think this hack the box CPTS, the certified penetration testing specialist is one great way to do it because it covers so much. It's so top tier, high quality and there is the grit, there is the determination, and there is the stubbornness when it's not being spoon fed to you. There's so much more that you gain from it. And I, I realize that's kind of a weird thing to chat about. But when I was speaking with others, with other students, with other folks going through the CPTS, I felt good in some cases because they said, and we agreed, like, this is tough. <laughs> That's kind of, it's kind of tough. With that, I've been rambling for way too long, but hey, my goodness, Hack the Box, Hack the Box Academy, the CPTS Certified Penetration Testing Specialist. You've got my two thumbs up. You've got my 10 out of 10 review. You've got my, hey, I want to come back. I want to do it again. I want to knock this thing out of the park. Uh, and I hope that you listening in maybe got some inspiration and some motivation to go take a crack at it yourself and go beat me. Go finish it. Go pass before I do. Because man, hey, it's one of the great ways to learn. It's one of the best ways to be battle tested and a penetration tester, a certified penetration testing specialist in today's world. So thanks for watching, everyone. Like, comment, subscribe. See you in the next video.